Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be doing uh, something that's a little bit different. Today's video is going to be a get ready with me. I will share with you my favorite beauty products as I apply them, as well as my wig of the month. I have so many questions about my makeup and what I use and how I use them that I thought that this would be a great series. If you all like it, please let me know and I will continue doing these with different types of eye looks, eye makeup. Just please bear in mind that I am not a makeup artist. I am a 65 year old that has been wearing makeup for 50 years. I started wearing makeup at a, at a very young age because I just fell in love with it. And I love wigs. I feel they kind of go hand in hand, our makeup and our wigs. And a lot of times I see members on our private Facebook group, Wig Studio One, Wig and Topper Support Group, saying, I don't know what type of eyeshadow to use with this color wig or that color wig. So that's why I thought about doing that. The wig that I'm going to be showing you today is from Wig Studio One, where is where I that is where I purchase all of my wigs. If you do not want to see the makeup portion, I will leave a timestamp down below letting you know where the wig of the month starts. And that way you can skip over the makeup if it's not something that you're interested in. But I thought this would be a lot of fun. Please let me know what your thoughts, but please, be kind because I am not a makeup artist. I may be using the wrong brushes. I may be applying it incorrectly and it's just the way I do it and what works for me. Certainly because I do it a certain way doesn't mean that it's the only way. There are many ways for us to apply makeup. All right, without further ado, let me just give you a little bit of background. I have, as I mentioned, I am 65 years old. I have a normal, normal skin. I do have some Botox right here at the 11s. There is not any skincare in the world that is going to take care of those, of those 11s. So I do have, I just want to bring that up. I do have the Botox right there. I have crow's feet. I have very hooded eyes. So when I apply my makeup, I try to make it so to open up my eyes a little bit more. There may be other ways. This is just, again, what works for me. I'm going to start out with a primer due to my age, and I'm going to bring you up a little bit closer so you can see I have, I have enlarged pores right around my nose and around my area right here. Yep. So I really what I use is this Cali Ray, and I will leave all the products listed down below with links if you want to go and check them out. Everything, you, I think you can get just about everything at Sephora or Ulta or anywhere. Uh, Cali Ray, this I have found to be such a great primer. And what you do is you just take a little pea size, just a little pea size of it, put your hands together and just press it in. Now the thing with this primer is that you wanna allow it to sit for a couple of minutes just to let it set before you start applying your foundation. For my under eyes, I've been using this Herbivore Supernova Eye Cream. I really like this. It's the one that I've been using during the day. So before I start applying my makeup, I just take a little bit just like a tiny, tiny little bit. And I put it on my ring fingers and just dab it under my eyes. I had already applied some of the eye cream when I applied my skincare this morning. But I like to add a little bit more when I, um, right before I apply my makeup. I just feel that the concealer works a lot better. I do have on this eye, I do have some dark, darkness right there. I also have a lot of sun damage because when I was a teenager, I would worship the sun. Even though I've been having Dermapen done on my skin and it has lightened lots, I still have a large area of hyperpigmentation and sunspots. So I try to use a concealer, um, a foundation 
that will cover it. Now, I don't always use a full coverage uh, foundation as the one I'm going to show you today. This one is by House Lab. I believe this is the Lady Gaga one. Eileen, the crazy wig lady, told me about it. She loves it, and I tried it. I have been using this every single day. I think it is a beautiful foundation and it lasts. I have worn this for 12 hours and this foundation appears just as beautiful when I first apply it as it does after um, it appears. Let me, let me restart that. It appears just as beautiful at the end of the day after 12 hours wear as it, as it does when I first apply it great foundation if now it works for normal skin i have no way of knowing how this would work for combination skin or for oily oh and my skin tone is a medium tan so the color that matched me perfectly was number 330. i use all kinds of makeup brushes my favorites are sonia g brushes but those are pretty pricey i will let you know what brushes i'm using in case you're interested but really any brush is going to work the, for, um, the foundation brush, my favorite, is the one by Makeup Forever. So I'm just going to squirt, like two squirts on here. I don't apply the foundation underneath my eyes because I, I am going to use a concealer. If I were to apply foundation and then apply the concealer over it it might appear cakey that's just my opinion after i apply my foundation i like to come with some um, mac fix plus to set in foundation in and that way it doesn't budge throughout the day just a, a few squirts is enough take a beauty blender and just press it in my favorite finishing powder is the one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is, I use the, the darkest color. I think this is the old one. This is number three from the old one. I have a new one and I believe it, it's another color, but I always use the darker color. The brush I'm going to use is by Sigma. This is F30, the powder brush. It's a bigger brush and I just swirl it around tap it to get rid of the excess. I love these products, which is why they are my favorites for the month of June. The next thing I do, and you know what? It doesn't matter what order you do any of this. This is just the way I do it. You, you do it however you like. One of my favorites from Hourglass. I'm just going to run my brush on these two right here. I don't come in all the way to the center because I'm older <laughs> and I feel that it just drags me down. So I kind of start like from the middle and up to the end and just go in a swooping motion up. For bronzer, I this is the one I've been using. This is by Too Faced. I don't even know if they have this anymore, but if they still have it, I will certainly link it down below for you. For my bronzer brush, I use number 119 from Zoeva. I don't like to use a very big brush for a bronzer, but not uh, such a small one as the one that I use for my blush because I don't really want it to go all over the place. And I use very little bronzer. I don't really need it that much. just to give a little bit of sun-kissed look. I just bought a new one from MAC. I haven't tried it yet, so I'll keep you posted on that. Now that I've got everything on my face, I'm gonna go back to the MAC Fix Plus. I don't want that powdery look. If you like a more powdery look, that's fine. Don't, you can skip this step. Go back with my Beauty Blender. I get so many questions. Marlene, why do you wear wigs? I wear wigs because I really love to change my color and style every day. And I really don't like sitting in a beauty salon. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my wig grip. I purchased this one at Wig Studio One. It is by far my favorite wig grip. 
it has the Wood Studio One logo logo on it. But what I really like about it is you see how thin that is in the back. So you're not going to get that bulk back there. There, I think there's one. There's another kind. I like the one with the lace and the and the lace for the part. But you know, there are all kinds. Just make sure that the logo is on your right. Another question that I I get so often is about the low hairline and how, what am I going to do? It shows with my wig. What I do is I just use root powder and I try to match it either to the root, if the wig has a root or as close as I can get to the color of the wig. In this case, I'm going to use Wow. Now this Wow is expensive. You can get some from Clairol that are, I think this is like $30 and the one from Clairol is about 11 or $12. I just ran out of the Clairol one in the dark brown. That's what this is. You could use your favorite root powder. It doesn't matter. I just like these better than the spray ones, but that's just me. That's just my preference. So I'm just going to do the applying it to my hairline and trying to cover up those gray. So when I apply my wig, you really can't you really can't tell. I apply my concealer next. I like the Zoeva brush because it has this slant right here. So it really allows me to come right into the center and and really uh, add the concealer. I don't add, I add a little bit under my eyes, but I keep my concealer at minimal because at minimum because I have a lot of wrinkles concealer or foundation or anything that I add under my eyes the more you can tell and I'm not trying to look like as if I'm 20 but you know I I'm, I'm not going to do anything that is going to appear make me appear older all right the uh, concealer I w I use lots of concealers the, this is the one that I've been using lately this is from Fiera this one has hyaluronic acid and it has collagen. It lasts, it doesn't cake, it doesn't crease. I think it works really well, but just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. So I'm just going to let a little bit, squeeze just a little bit. I will start at the bottom, do this area to eliminate that shadow. And right here at the corner, what happens is, at this corner right here, since I have hooded eyes, there's a shadow there. And that shadow, if I don't conceal it, it'll make my eyes appear even more hooded. So I'm going to cover that with some concealer. I'm going to add a little bit to my lid, just what whatever is left over. Notice that I'm not adding any more product. And if you're not really a makeup person, if you say, well, Marlene, I really don't know what I'm doing or, you know, it doesn't look as nice. My, what I have always suggested is this is makeup. It can be washed off. It's not permanent. At night, before you take off your makeup, before you apply your skincare, wash your face, take a shower, whatever is your last, uh, the last part of your routine at night, play with the makeup, play with it. See what works for you change your wig, see what, what, what looks better, what colors look better. And as time goes on, you'll see what you really like, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And then you just wash your face and apply your skincare. All right. The palette I'm going to use today, my favorite, I took this out. I tried to, I have a lot of palettes. So I try to take my old ones and I take them out and I use them for a couple of weeks in the month and just have them on rotation because otherwise they just sit there and I don't use them. This is an oldie, but a goodie. This is um, by Tarte, very basic. There are no shimmers in this palette. These are all, these are all matte. I'm going to take a small fluffy brush. I'm going to take Free Spirit. I'm going to apply it all over my lid. Now with a flat brush, this is from Sonia G. I'm going in with Multitasker. And I'm going to work on the outer V. I like to add that darker color to the out to that outer V because in order to open up my eyes some. And I'm going to bring it a little bit higher 
because my eyes again are so hooded. If I just add the eyeshadow with right very close to the crease, when I open up my eyes, you can't see it. So the best thing to do is to find, I know where, where the area is, but if you're just starting out, a good idea is to look straight in the mirror if you have hooded eyes and just see where, where it's going to land, looking straight ahead because that's how it's going to look as you go throughout your day. Now I'm going to take a fluffy brush. This is by Sigma. This is my favorite fluffy brush. This will eliminate any harsh lines and you could just get it as dark or as light as you like with the fluffy brush. If you hold your brush too close to the brush, you're not going to have too much control and it's and and you're going to eliminate what you have the what you have placed so we want to hold our brushes towards the end and that way we have the movement on our brush and it's a it's a light movement i'm going to take a pencil brush this is by sigma a pencil brush comes up to the tip i'm going to take that same color that multitasker and I'm going to do my under eye. Just kind of line it and I'll bring it up. If we apply our eyeshadows and it comes down, that's it's going to do that to, to your eyes. It's going to give that illusion as your as there's a down as if they're downward. There's nothing wrong with it. That's just not the look I'm going for. So I the look I'm going for is a more open. Therefore, I'm going to slant my eyeshadow up. If you see that it's coming down and you don't want it that way, you could just use a, a wipe and just wipe it off. I'm going to use the same pencil brush and I'm going with bombshell and just darkening up a little bit of that outer V. I'm going to use a flat Sonia G brush and I'm going to use Natural Beauty and I'm just going to apply it to the center, just to the center of the lid. I'm going to stay with the same brush and use force of nature to the inside. If I were using a, a shimmer, that's where I would apply it. My favorite mascara is the one from Hourglass. This is Caution. I'm going to apply my mascara and I'll be right back. For my brows, I like to use the Kosas this is Air Brow. I get this at Sephora. I'm going to use this from Sunday Fridays. I absolutely love it. Mine is in the color Brown Sugar. I love it because it's got that shea butter. It moisturizes. It, it hydrates. All right, my face is done, so I'm ready to go on to the wig. For my wig of the month, I have On Point by Raquel Welch in the color Cinnabar. Again, I purchased it at Wig Studio One three years ago. And I thought this month of June, I thought, let me take this out and wear it because I hadn't worn it in quite a few months and I wore it a lot during the month of June. So we have a lace front that goes almost all the way to the ear tab. We have a center part, minimal, minimal permatease. We have the memory three cap. So it's really going to take the form of our heads have an extended nape and you could see how much I cinch it in to accommodate my 21 and a half inch circumference. I cannot believe three years old how well this wig has held up and all I do is wash it every seven, eight wears and apply some heat uh, and I, I just use some steam or maybe just the flat iron on the ends and the wig is perfect. It's auburn. It's a very dark auburn with some light auburn. And I love a center part. So on point is angled. It's a little shorter in the back, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. And then it slants up to the front. And if you wanted to tuck it because the density is average, you can do that. What I like to do with these with on point, I like to take out a little bit of the fibers out just to cover some of my hairline. But if you wanted to wear it completely tucked, you can do that. Such a pretty style that is no longer talked about enough. 
see how pretty this it's so nicely angled thank you everyone i hope you've enjoyed my get ready with me and my monthly favorites please let me know if you enjoy these types of videos and i will continue doing at least once a month with a makeup using different palettes different foundation i will do that one at least once a month I'd love to hear from you. Thank you, everyone. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.